One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is Isaiah chapter 60, verse 1. And it says, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. We are to be light bearers reflecting God's image and his glory to the world. Our message is more ripe today than ever. It's called a widening problem. In a historical first, there are now as many overnourished people as undernourished people in the world. Here's the recipe for obesity on such a global scale. It says take technology, cars, washing machines, elevators that reduce physical exertion. Add television and video games. Stir in the intensive marketing of candy and fast food and you have the makings of an epidemic. We're to be watchmen and light bearers to the world and God gave to this church a very unique message, what I spoke about last night, the three angels' messages. And he has also blessed this church with the light in regards to health reform. At a time where the world is suffering in a historical first, the greatest crisis in health care we have ever seen. It says in the UK, snack food consumption rose nearly 25% in five years. In Africa, in some parts of Africa, obesity afflicts more children than malnutrition. In Asia, in Shanghai, roads once filled with pedestrians and cyclists are now congested with cars. Kentucky Fried Chicken opened a drive through restaurant in Beijing in 2002 with more to come. And Oceania, Pacific Islanders have always valued hefty physiques. Now their shift away from local foods to a high-fat Western diet has made them among the world's fattest people. So we're facing a health care crisis globally now. And God has given this church a very unique message, a health message. Well, God also wants us to know the future, and he's blessed a church on this earth with a very special prophetic gift. And he did that because he loves you. You have Elijah the prophet, Miriam the prophetess, Isaiah and Deborah, Amos and Huldah, Malachi and Anna, Daniel and Philip's four daughters. Jesus prophesied, did he not? As the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noah entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. And then he tells us, this is what's going to happen before the end of the world. So in this verse, he's giving us an illustration that life will be going on as usual before the coming of the Lord. But in the book of Luke, where we read the same prophecy, he says it a little differently than Matthew. It says, and take heed to yourself, lest at any time your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. Global obesity? Would he use food? Would he try to deceive people into thinking that it really doesn't matter what I eat as long as you can chew it and swallow it. You know, this is interesting because surfeiting means an overabundance of food and drunkenness means an overabundance of drink. So in the last days prior to Christ's coming, the devil is using another snare. He's taking food and he's putting it in the form of taste sensations and junk food and high fat, saturated foods filled with excitotoxins and chemicals and pesticides. And he puts it on every street corner in America, luring people like a snare because he knows his strongest hold on man is the appetite. And he seeks to stimulate your appetite in every possible way. So what you're eating can have a chemical response in the brain like THC and marijuana. The Food and Drug Administration says the average American be carrying 5 to 22 pounds of feces in them on a given day. 
secondly, colorectal cancer is the second leading cause of death from cancer in America, and males now have a 47% chance of getting cancer. Females, 38% chance of getting cancer, and heart disease will kill one out of every three Americans, and 100 million Americans now have high cholesterol. Global obesity will increase by 40%. There are currently 1.6 billion overweight adults in the world, and that number is projected to grow by 40% over the next 10 years. At least 300 million of them are clinically obese and is a major contributor to the global burden of chronic disease and disability. Two thirds of Americans are now overweight, 15 million have diabetes, and diabetes among Americans in their 30s has increased. 70% in less than 10 years. According to a new study released by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, three fourths, that's 75% of Americans will be obese or overweight by 2020. That's in 10 years. We won! America has become the fattest nation in the world. Were the dangers of the standard American diet predicted over 2,000 years ago? Jesus said there would be surfeiting and drunkenness in the last days, and it would be a snare. And in National Geographic, in this article, it talks about obesity, and it begins to tell how it affects the liver, it affects the heart, it affects your arteries, it affects your female organs, that it will increase chances for heart disease, diabetes, liver disease, colon cancer, osteoarthritis, and stroke. In other words, the heavier you are, the more likely you are to get one of these other major diseases that are killing Americans by the millions. In Acts chapter 2 it says, and it shall come to pass in the last days. Are we living in the last days? Okay. It shall come to pass in the last days, says God, not Danny Vieira, God, that he'll pour out his spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. That heavy? That God's going to move on his spirit to prophesy, to foretell the future, to prevent his church from becoming disabled and defective in the last days when they should be standing as watchmen and light bearers to proclaim a message that's unique to the world. And all my servants and all my handmaidens I'll pour out in those days of my spirit and they shall prophesy. The Bible tells us specifically that the last day church will have this gift of prophecy. In fact, in Revelation 12, 17, it says, And the dragon, Satan, was wroth with the church or the woman, and he went to make war with the remnant of her seed, who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And I want to ask you a question. Has God left his church without prophetic guidance in these last days? No, he hasn't. Should we listen to the prophetic guidance? In 1864... Many years ago, at a time when doctors were recommending smoking tobacco for the treatment of lung diseases, think of that. Doctors are recommending tobacco for the treatment of lung diseases, and somebody comes and writes in this year that tobacco's a poison of the most deceitful and malignant kind, having an exciting, then paralyzing influence upon the nerves of the body. Multitudes have fallen victims to its poisonous influence. They have surely murdered themselves with this slow poison. Those who acquire and indulge the unnatural appetite for tobacco do this at the expense of health. They are destroying nervous energy, lessening vital force, and sacrificing mental strength. I had a man who came to see me with lung cancer, and he had a, a, a pack of Marlboros in his front pocket. And I said, he's got to be kidding. And I said, you're here for lung cancer? He said, yes. And I said, what's this? He says, 
and I'm not quitting. I said, then I'm not going to see you. And he said, that's not a very Christ-like attitude. I said, can I have your cigarettes for a minute, please? And I said, Surgeon General warning, smoking causes lung cancer. What do you want me to do? You're not going to quit. What do you want me to do? And he said, you know, you Christians, you're, you're, you're quite a group. And I said, why is that? And he said, you're not free. You don't have liberty. You don't smoke. You don't drink. You don't listen to certain types of music. And I said, you know, you have the wrong definition for freedom and liberty, brother. I said, can I have one of these cigarettes? What? And I put it in my mouth. I said, can, you have a lighter? I'm sure you have a lighter. Can I have your lighter? And he gives me his lighter and I flicked it on and I brought it about an inch to my face. And I, I said, let me tell you something about the definition of freedom. I can light this cigarette right now and smoke it. I have that choice. You quit right now. I said, who's the slave? You're in bondage and you're calling it freedom. You can't stop. That's freedom? He goes, you know, I've never heard it that way. I said, right. Besides the commandment says thou shalt not kill. And you know, at the end of the appointment, which I did on donation basis, he pulled out a checkbook and wrote me a check for $100 and said, that's the best sermon I've ever heard. And he quit and never smoked again. <laughs> Those who acquire indulge in a natural appetite for tobacco do this at the expense of health. They are destroying nervous energy, lessening vital force, and sacrificing mental strength. Do you believe that? Well, what if I substituted articles of food that destroy nervous energy, lessen vital force, and sacrifice mental strength? Will you quit? Let's look at tobacco quickly. Nearly one in every five deaths in ca is caused by tobacco use. Smoking is responsible for 90% of lung cancer deaths in men, 80% in women. Three million die each year, year worldwide from smoking. It costs a billion a week in health care costs. It contains more than 3,000 chemical substances. And this drug addiction also causes coronary heart disease, stroke, artery damage, peripheral vascular disease, emphysema, bronchitis, impotence, loss of bone density, stillbirth, sudden infant death syndrome, and many types of cancer. And even the secondhand smoke causes diseases in those people that are inhaling it. Why would anyone want to smoke? If you were the devil, would you use tobacco as a snare to addict people that they cannot quit the habit? Tobacco using is a habit which frequently affects the nervous system in a more powerful manner than does the use of alcohol. It binds the victim in stronger bands of slavery, there's that word again, they think they're free because they can smoke, then does the intoxicating cup, the habits more difficult to overcome, body and mind are in many cases more thoroughly intoxicated with the use of tobacco than with spurious liquors, for it is more subtle poison. You know, here's what I learned about the devil. He just doesn't jump out and say, gotcha. He slowly deadens your mind. Whether he's taking articles of food, whether he takes tobacco, whether he takes over-the-counter prescription drugs, whether he's using alcohol, whatever he's using, medical marijuana, he's slowly deadening your mind. Because he knows that's where God's going to seal you, is in your forehead. Let's slowly deaden their mind. And what does God say? Let's renew their mind. No, let's kill their mind. I picked this up at the American Cancer Society and it said, if what happened on your inside happened on your outside, would you still smoke? Warning, dying from smoking isn't pretty. But the tobacco industry hires beautiful movie stars and puts them on the cover of Cigar Magazine, even though we know that increased smoking increases 
mortality rate. In 1890, she wrote that men are destroying reason by liquor drinking. In 1900, she said, the result of liquor drinking is demonstrated by murders, yet the liquor curse is legalized and works untold ruin in the hands of those who love to tamper with that which ruins not only the poor victim but its whole family. Then in 1905, she linked the use of alcoholic beverages with the destruction of the sensitive nerves of the brain. Do you get this? Alcohol, the brain, the nervous system. Tobacco, the brain, the nervous system, pesticides and chemicals, aspartame, NutraSweet, excitotoxins, lesions in the brain, mad cow disease, spongy holes in the brain. You get in the picture? Let's get their brain, their mind. Alcohol is linked to virtually every negative aspect of society, suicide, violent crime, birth defects, industrial accidents, domestic and sexual abuse, disease, homelessness, and death. It causes loss of brain cells, cirrhosis of the liver, cancer, heart disease, pancreatitis, high blood pressure, peptic ulcer disease, reflux disease, anemia, gout, chronic fatigue. A study at Harvard School of Public Health showed a 50% increase in the risk of breast cancer among women who drank as little as one glass each day and a 70% increase among those who had two glasses. And then it says in another study that researchers at the National Cancer Institute reported a 50% higher risk for women who drink any alcohol at all and as much as a 100% increase in the risk for those who had three drinks or more per week. Now that's 1987, so let's go to February 24, 2009. Something more current. It was called the Million Women Study. And it said even relatively low levels of drinking on the order of one alcoholic drink per day increases a woman's risk of developing cancer, said the lead researcher from the Cancer Epidemiology Unit at the University of Oxford in the United Kingdom. In 1906, regarded as a prophet by many and a woman with deep spiritual insights by others, she had seen the destruction of San Francisco pass before her mind's eye as early as 1902 when she warned, not long hence, these cities will suffer under the judgments of God. This is confirming her prophetic gift. San Francisco and Oakland are becoming a Sodom and Gomorrah and the Lord will visit them in wrath. This is a warning. 490 city blocks destroyed, 250,000 homeless, 1,500 injured, property destroyed at the rate of $1 million every 10 minutes. Fires up to 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit, a prophecy had literally been fulfilled. In 1868, the liability to take Disease is increasing tenfold by meat eating. In what year? 1868. The same lady who predicted the earthquake, the same lady who wrote about tobacco, the same lady who wrote about alcohol and its effect on the mind is saying the liability to take disease is increasing tenfold because of eating meat. These are not my words. Worldly physicians cannot account for the rapid increase of disease among the human family. But we know that much of the suffering is caused by the eating of dead flesh, 1901. In 1870, could you see the nature of the meat you eat? Could you see the animals when living from which the flesh is taken when dead? You would turn with loathing from your flesh meats. The animals whose flesh you eat are frequently so diseased that if left alone they would die of themselves, but while the breath of life is in them, they are killed and brought to market, and you take directly into your system humors and poisons of the worst kind, and yet you realize it not. Two things stood out to me in my lecture circuit that were profound. One, after I spoke at Tacoma Park in front of a thousand Adventists, 
One lady walked out and said, you know, she had tears in her eyes. She said, you spoke the truth today, and that's it. I'm selling my dairy. Enough. We cannot control the bacteria. We're losing. In another setting, I was doing a cooking school, and at the end of my presentation, a man stood up and raised his hand, and I called on him. He was a federal meat inspector. And I thought he was going to challenge me on some of my information, and my teacher always taught me accuracy, accuracy, accuracy. Do not speak it if you can't prove it. And he said, I have to allow the selling of animals that are dying, as long as they are breathing, being sold at market for like a hundred bucks, because it's still breathing, it's allowed to be put in the human food chain. In 1905, a 105-year-old prophecy, she said flesh was never the best food, but its use is now doubly objectionable since disease in animals is so rapidly increasing. And the USDA orders the largest meat recall in U.S. history. Now this is after Clinton and Kessler from the FDA met and said, we're not going to feed these animals anymore to other cows. We can't put these dead, dying, diseased animals into the feed to other cows anymore because of mad cow and other issues. This is after that. Because nobody's policing it. 143 million pounds of beef, a California meat packer's entire production for the past two years because the company did not prevent ailing animals from entering the U.S. food supply. About 37 million pounds of the meat, cuts, ground beef, prepared products such as meatballs and burrito filling went to school lunch and other public nutrition programs and almost all of this product is likely to have been consumed by the children. These graphic images videotaped by the Humane Society at a Southern California slaughterhouse are now prompting the largest beef recall in U.S. history. A cow pushed with a forklift, another dragged with a chain, animals too sick to walk are ultimately killed and their meat processed. Much of it is going to school lunch programs. Criminal charges were filed against two employees at the Westland Hallmark Meat Company Friday. Both were fired. Now the U.S. Department of Agriculture is ordering the recall of 143 million pounds of frozen beef that had come from the company. By allowing downed cattle into the food supply, we're increasing the risk of human exposure to mad cow disease, salmonella, E. coli, and other food poisoning. No charges have been filed against Westland, but an investigation is ongoing. Brian Thomas, the Associated Press. The chickens, they're transported long distances and subjected to great suffering in reaching a market traveling for weary miles over the hot, dusty roads or crowded into filthy cars, feverish and exhausted, often for many hours, deprived of food and water, the poor creatures are driven to their death that human beings may feed on their carcass. And millions of people in the U.S. fall victim to foodborne illness every year, and we blame meat inspectors and insufficient cooking. But did you know that just in Arkansas, 2.6 million pounds of chicken manure become breakfast for beef cattle? You can't feed the waste of an animal to another animal without that animal suffering any more than you can feed the waste of a human to a human and expect you to thrive with good health. This is a very interesting article, and this morning I was reading some of it, and I, I want to show you something here that I hadn't caught before, but I did this time. Dirty birds. Consumer reports. Dirty birds. If you eat undercooked or mishandled chicken, our new tests indicate you have a good chance of feeling miserable. Because Consumer Reports analysis of fresh whole broilers bought nationwide revealed that 83% harbor Campylobacter or Salmonella, the leading bacterial causes of foodborne disease. And here's what I hadn't seen before that I'm going to read you now. Think premium brands are safer? Overall, chickens labeled as organic or raised without antibiotics 
and costing three to five dollars a pound were more likely to harbor salmonella than were conventionally produced broilers that cost more like a dollar per pound. So your organic chicken was worse. Number one on the list, Tyson Foods. Then I check this, in the largest national analysis of contamination and antibiotic resistance in store-bought chicken ever published, we tested 525 fresh whole broilers bought at supermarkets, mass merchandisers, gourmet shops, and natural food stores in 23 states. Then I put Cambylobacter was present in 81% of the chickens. That's not very good news. Would you say? So the headlines tell the story. Meat dish served at party causes poisoning. Rare illness hits girls. More children dying from burgers. Cow AIDS, no threat to the US. Bad meat linked to E. coli. And death causes British panic over mad cow disease. So you get E. coli in a box. You can eat at Murder King or the Golden Arches of Babylon. Yummy chicken McNuggets. This, the paste, they're taking the chickens and they got this new process called advanced meat recovery where they take the chicken and they strip it to the bone and it says the paste becomes the main ingredient in many hot dogs, bologna, chicken nuggets, pepperoni, salami and jerky and the industry calls this method AMR or advanced meat recovery. Once the chicken has been processed, it has to be soaked in ammonia to kill the bacteria, flavored and dyed, because people would freak out if their McNuggets were cream strawberry colored, which is actually the color of flesh and blood. But watch the picture. One lady got that, deep fried chicken head. Shouldn't say ooh, we eat every other part of them, don't we? We eat his kidneys, his livers, gizzards the rear end, the breast, you pull it off the bone with your teeth and you're chewing a dead bird. Just for the record, the Bible calls these abominations, shrimp, crabs, oysters, lobsters, you know those delicacies we like, which I call the cockroaches of the sea, the pigs of the water. See, God said, don't eat the pig. That's the most disgusting thing, creature you can eat. I mean, trichina worms, it doesn't sweat. You squeeze between its knuckles and its lymph system dumps all this junk, garbage, out of its body. And, and these creatures of the ocean, well, let me tell you a story. I had one man, when I was lecturing on the unclean and, and the abominations in Leviticus, that he, he said, you know, I fish for crabs for a living, and we found that the greatest catch for the crabs was early in the morning, right in the docks, and we discovered that the boats were dumping their toilets in the, in the docks, and the crabs were eating the feces from human beings. Don't eat the flesh from unclean animals. It has to do with hygiene. Then we find that hot dogs increase leukemia and tumors, specifically brain tumors in children. And then she warned of transmittal disease in 1905. Is that mercy from God or what? You know, we're going to get this deal called mad cow disease. And I'm going to warn you 105 years ago. You can eat the flesh of an animal that may have cancer, tuberculosis, or other fatal diseases, and it can pass to you through eating it. Did she see bovine spongy form encephalopathy or mad cow disease? Did she see that cows were going to be eating cows? Did she see the cover of Newsweek? Did she see brain cells and the brain tissue on being destroyed by prions, a freak of nature with no RNA DNA? The infecting agent in mad cow disease that eats holes in your brain 
like a sponge? Did she see this article that says the U.S. government, the cattle industry, and many experts now voice confidence in the nation's firewall and say the risk to consumers is light? And then it continues. In truth, in other words, that's not true. America's safeguard and surveillance efforts are far weaker than most people realize, and many of the developing countries that now face the greatest risk, such efforts are non-existent. How many of the world's cattle are now silently incubating bovine spongiform encephalopathy? How many people are contracting it? The truth is we don't know. You know, I called Howard Lyman, remember? the mad cowboy who was on the Oprah Winfrey show that was educating her about mad cow disease and prions, and she made that infamous statement, I will not eat another hamburger. And the Cattlemen's Association got so aggressive in their lawsuit against her that she had to move her show to Texas to keep filming because the court battle was going on in that state. He said to me the other day on the phone when I called him, I said, Howard, you know, you once made a statement that one in 1,800 cows in the U.S. is being tested for mad cow disease. Is this true? He said, Danny, it's a joke. It's more like one in every 750,000 cows. Nobody's testing. And the devil laughs because billions and billions of burgers are sold at the golden arches of Babylon and he's trying to destroy your brain. And I'd say this, hey, guys, did you know this? <laughs> we need to get off all this meat. What do you say? Let's rally the forces. Let's proclaim the health message. Let's go out to the world and yell this from the rooftops. Anybody with me? It's going to kill us. Don't eat it. Did you know that cow brains are added to hamburgers? It was on the cover of USA Today. Spinal cords and brains are added to the hamburgers. Well, who was the one who kept warning us about this? Ellen Gould White was born in Gornham, Maine on November 26, 1827, and she was the most prolific American female author of all time. Mrs. White transcribed over 100,000 pages containing 25 million words by hand, and she's perhaps best remembered for her work in the field of nutrition and health, where some researchers and scholars still hold her in awe. And there's an amazing similarity between the visions of Ellen White and that of Daniel the prophet. We read in the Bible in Daniel chapter 10 that a glorious being appeared to him, a glorious being appeared to her. You ever taken the tour at Elmshaven in Napa Valley in California? You'll hear the stories of the room was lit up and they'd think that it was on fire, but it was the angels that were singing to her. And then he lost his strength and fell into a deep sleep. She would go into a trance. He heard the voice of the being speaking to him, even though in this state, same with her. He was strengthened. I recently went to Michigan and saw a replica of the 18-pound Bible she held at arm's length for 30 minutes. It was huge. And Daniel didn't breathe. There was no breath in him. She didn't breathe when in vision. They'd test her with a little glass, a little mirror, and there was no fog. It didn't fog over, and, and the candle didn't flicker because... God was doing something miraculous through this woman who said that there will be transmittal disease over a hundred years ago and it's in the United States and they're not telling you and they're not testing the cows and you are running a risk big time by eating the flesh of dead cows. And you know this. You've known it for a long time. In 1905, people are continually eating the flesh that's filled with tuberculosis and it's back and it's on the cover of Newsweek and it's putting people at risk and it's a deadlier strain that could be more dangerous to the threat of our public health. She warned of the fish. 
Does Consumer Reports have to tell you that of 113 samples, 44% were contaminated with human fecal bacteria? Do you have to see more tumors on the face of the fish and the warnings of mercury toxicity? We know that the more animal protein you eat, the more saturated animal fat you eat, the more you, you, you increase your risk of these diseases. Cancer, heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, colon diseases, obesity, kidney and liver disease, osteoporosis, and autoimmune diseases. We know this because of the book called The China Study. It's probably one of my favorite books that have ever come out on nutrition. And the study of epidemiology showing that our diet causes these major diseases. It's confirmed. This is one of the strongest supports out today of the benefits of a plant-based diet. It says that in America, we eat about 80% of the 15 to 16% of our total calories comes from protein. 80% of that's from animal-based foods. But in rural China, only 9 to 10% of the calories come from protein, and 10% of the protein comes from animal-based foods. So we're eating like 80% in America, 10% in China, and they don't have osteoporosis. They don't have the colon cancer, the breast cancer, the high blood pressure, the osteoporosis, the diseases that we're seeing in America. And what T. Colin Campbell did, he showed that it's the diet that's causing the, the diseases. So what's the future for meat and our dairy and eggs? In 1902, she said, let the diet reform be progressive. Let people be taught how to prepare food without the use of milk or butter. Tell them the time will soon come. Friends, brothers and sisters in the faith, we're past the time. We're way late. In five years, and possibly, 200,000 British people may be dying a year because they're already infected with prions from mad cow disease and it's incubating. They're predicting many people are infected with mad cow. There's no cure. <coughs> they're going to die. And I'm so glad I read these statements back in 1990 and got my children off all animal food. And just because it's white and it's liquid doesn't mean it's safe. It's still coming from those animals. Let me tell you something. John McDougall, who I highly respect, Dr. Virgil Holtz, who was an epidemiologist, a medical doctor, also was a federal meat inspector, told me, both of them, that upward of 80% of the dairy herds in this country are infected with blood cancer. 50%, Dr. Virgil Hull said, in my county, San Joaquin County, are infected with AIDS. See, it's not just a healthy piece of meat anymore. No, I'm telling you, she's telling you, he's telling you, that you're living in the last days, there will be surfeiting and drunkenness. The devil's using articles of food again because he wants to destroy your mind. Look what it says. There will come a time when it's no safety in using eggs, milk, cream, or butter because the disease in animals is increasing in proportion with the increase of the wickedness of men. It's saying here, the iniquity of the fallen race. And the whole animal kingdom will groan under the diseases that curse our earth. 2001, they're now finding casomorphine 7, morphine, casomorphine, morphine-like compounds in milk that's causing schizophrenia and hyperactivity or disorders in children. This was an interesting article that's now showing that recombinant bovine growth hormone produced by Monsanto, who also produces NutraSweet, is being pumped into these cows to produce more dairy products and with more production of milk, more chance of mastitis and infection. Already the FDA allows 750 million pus cells per liter of milk. 
There's a lot of disease. There's a lot of infection. There's artificial hormones that cause breast, colon, prostate cancer. Confirmed. And up in the right-hand corner, it says the reporters were forced to lie about it on Fox television. Here's 1,500 articles on milk, if you don't believe me. Dr. Robert K. Kradjian, a breast cancer surgeon, reviewed 1,500 articles on milk recorded in the medicine archives. And children's problems were allergies, ear and tonsil infections, bedwetting, asthma, intestinal bleeding, colic and diabetes. In adults, the problems were heart disease, arthritis, allergy, sinusitis, leukemia, lymphoma, and cancer. We should avoid drinking disease body fluids from cows. So milk has something for everybody. Leukemia viruses that cause cancer. Immunodeficiency viruses that cause AIDS. Bovine growth hormone, utter infections. Antibiotic residues, resistant bacteria. Prions, mad cow disease. Estrogen, breast cancer. Xanthine oxidase, heart disease. Mycobacterium paratuberculosis. Crohn's disease, protein, juvenile diabetes, fat, adult diabetes, and cancer. Blood and pus, yuck. In 1870, great amounts of milk and sugar clog the system, irritate the digestive organs, affect the brain again. The brain. Anything that hinders the living machinery affects the brain very directly. And from the light given me, sugar, when largely used, is more injurious than meat. Sugar is not good for the stomach. It causes fermentation. This clouds the brain. The devil knows it. Let's take the milk, the secretions of the diseased cows, and let's mix it with the sugar and produce haagen and Ben and & Jerry's. And let's sell those kids the burgers on one corner and sell them the ice cream cones on the other. Let's get their brain. The average American consumes 150 pounds of sugar a year, 75% hidden, 500 nutrition empty calories a day from sugar. Here's what gets me about sugar. It depletes your B vitamins and leaches calcium from your bones. It affects the nerve and brain functions of the body, causes hyperactivity, attention deficit hyperactivity in children. It's a contributing factor in diabetes. 95% of the children in the country have tooth decay. Sugar decreases your body's ability to fight infection. It's going to paralyze your white blood cells. Sugar substitutes are harmful. Don't drink diet sodas. Nutrisweet sweet is worse. And it causes when you have hypoglycemia, low blood sugar, low thyroid, rapid heart rate, depression, poor concentration, and this is the way we eat today. A diet chosen by our Creator. Grains, fruits, vegetables constitute the diet chosen by our Creator. These foods prepared in as simple and natural manner as possible are the most healthful and nourishing. They impart a strength, a power of endurance, a vigor of intellect that are not afforded by a more complex and stimulating diet. In grains, fruits, and vegetables, and nuts are to be found all the food elements that we need if we will come to the Lord. In simplicity of mind, He will teach us how to prepare wholesome food free from the taint of flesh meats. You see, He gave us this diet plan in Eden, and we're going back to it. It's in the middle. We're having trouble. Isn't that beautiful? The promise of fruits and vegetables, a whole plant food-based diet is proven to prevent and reverse chronic diseases. This is an interesting study I just found. A study in the American Journal of Epidemiology revealed a link between dairy and meat consumption and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Yale University scientists revealed people eating diets rich in fiber vegetables develop low rates of lymphatic cancer, while the standard American diet rich in dairy and meat compromised their immunity and they were more susceptible to developing lymphomas. So the health benefits of a vegetarian diet, I put some of them. It lowers body mass, has no saturated fats, lowers blood cholesterol levels, 
It less deaths from ischemic heart attacks, lowers blood pressure, lowers the rate of type 2 diabetes, high in fiber for healthy bowel movements, high in vitamins, minerals, proteins, fats, and carbs, high in antioxidants and phytochemicals, lower rates of prostate, breast, and colon cancer. Diets high in fruits and vegetables help prevent cataracts, arthritis, and osteoporosis, healthier skin, nails, and hair, and increase energy in a longer life. That's why Charmaine's going to teach you tomorrow. And I hope many of you come. We're going to prepare all live food, but you're going to have pizza. You're going to have a mac cream instead of mayonnaise that's delicious, and even a fake salmon type dish. And we'll tell you what it's made out of later. But it's all living food because the electrical charge is in it to charge us. You see, at Bella Vita Lifestyle Center, I feed the people for 10 days, which I'll speak on tonight. Don't miss the next meeting. It's on the mind-body connection. And it's really going to help many of you that are suffering emotionally or may find out that your arthritis is related to the bitterness and the anger in your mind. And then Charmaine's going to share a testimony. And this evening I'm going to talk about natural healing and what we do at Bella Vita Lifestyle Center. But we feed them a live diet because it's the most powerful for rebuilding and healing. And see that statement? The doctor of the future will prescribe whole foods as medicine, cancer, and diet. And at Bella Vita we feed them rainbows. Lots of colors with all these powerful antioxidants and phytochemicals. We feed them all these beautiful foods and their meals are therapeutic. And in case you're still skeptical, if I haven't made my case, I'll finish in 1909 in New York City. On one occasion, when in New York City, I was in the night season called upon to behold building rising story after story toward heaven. The scene that next passed before me was an alarm of fire. Men looked at the lofty and supposedly fireproof buildings and said they were perfectly safe. But these buildings were consumed as if made of pitch. The fire engines could do nothing to stay the destruction. The firemen were unable to operate their engines. If you want to read this, it's in 9T, starting on page 11, 911. In closing, there's going to be a lot more sick people coming. We have been counseled in regards to health reform and also how to help the sick, to open wellness centers. I want to see the health message revived in the church, and it's going to happen individually. Reformation must take place before revival, and reformation is individual. It's to be proclaimed with a loud voice as we approach the great final test. This test must come to the churches in connection with true medical missionary work. We are told that in the time of trouble, there will be suffering ones, plenty of them, that will need help. So because of the need, but also for their own sake, they should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in regard to four things. Disease, its causes, prevention, and cure. That's why next year in September, I'm going to begin my first 30-day medical missionary school called Risen. Based on Isaiah 60, verse 1, Arise, shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. You know, the word means irradiating beams of light to the world in darkness. And it stands for a remedial and integrated school of evangelism and naturopathy. I want to train workers to go out into this world with this message, with the health reform, with the natural remedies to help many other people. We've come to a time when every member of the church should take hold of medical missionary work. That's every one of you. Do you get it? All the world will be subject to the snares of Satan, all those in the whole world, and God has called a church into being. I'm one man. There's a lot of you here today. Every one, every member of the church should take hold 
of the medical missionary work. The world is a laser house filled with the victims of both physical and spiritual disease. Everywhere people are perishing for the lack of the knowledge of the truths that God has committed to Seventh-day Adventists. The members of the church are in need of an awakening and that they may realize their responsibility to impart these truths. Those who have been enlightened by the truth are to be light bearers to the world. To hide our light at this time is to make a terrible mistake. And then she quotes Isaiah 60 verse 1. Arise church. Arise. Shine. The light has come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. I just want to appeal that if there's anyone here who says, you know, I've seen truth today. I have these books. I'm a seven-day Adventist, but I'm not doing the work. If there's somebody that the Holy Spirit's pricking today that would like to join me on my knees right here in front and say, you know, I want to change my lifestyle. I want to change the foods that I eat. Lord, I need the power because I've tried in the past and I've failed. But I need your Holy Spirit power because the evidence is clear. Maybe you're eating pork. Maybe you're drinking wine. Maybe you have an occasional cigarette. Maybe you're doing something else. But maybe your heart today is you want to be engaged in the work. You want to go out and tell people and warn them and not wait till thousands are dropping because of mad cow disease, more dying of cancer, more brain wasting diseases, but have the courage and the resources to take this message to the world and be faithful to the calling. If you'd like to join me in prayer, and that's your prayer today, we got one more. Praise God. Quit smoking. I smell it. Good for him. So anybody else wants to come, come join us. And we're going to close with a prayer. Have the courage. Listen to the Holy Spirit. This may be your last chance. Praise God. More coming. God is powerful. I believe he's moving on his people. Time is short. You know the work you can do in this church to this community? You know, I know many of us wait that one day we're going to give up that meat. Maybe this is the day. Today. Today's your day. Father, the food supply in this world today is getting more deadly and more dangerous. And you have given us light through Ellen White. And she even warns us in first selected messages, page 48, that the last deception of Satan will be to make her writings to have no effect in the church. And we're seeing that today. So, Father, I pray for this church congregation that that does not happen. Because where there is no vision, the people perish. So, Father, I thank you for the power that you are giving us today from your heavenly throne that you're touching many minds and hearts, Father. Forgive us where we have failed. But wake us up, Father. Oh, God, wake us up. And let us walk in a new path. Continue to bless these meetings through the day. And bless this man, Father. Bless his cancer in his neck. Deliver him from tobacco. Thank you for the courage to be the first man up here. Father, May he, as he reaches out and touches the hem of your garment, send thy healing virtue into his body, transform him, make his cells new. And may he practice the diet that I've been talking about and, and getting rid of these animal foods and, and seeing that lymphomas increase by dairy and meat. Father, bless him. Thank you for his example today. And bless this church. Thank you for bringing us here. And may the rest of the meetings light this place on fire. And may it be evident that the glory has risen upon this church. And I pray this as a humble servant in Jesus' name.
Yeah.